Welcome back to Black News Tonight. Trans lives across the world are constantly in a battle. In the UK, for example, a recent survey found that 65% of trans people believe that hiding their identity is necessary just to feel safe at work. Meanwhile, right here in the United States, Arkansas became the first state in the nation to enact a law banning transgender treatment and surgeries for children under the age of 18. Here to help us unpack more about what all this means, we've got national organizer and trans activist Hope Giselle, and we've also got the first black woman to ever lead a nationwide LGBTQ organization, Aisha Mills. It's good to have you both on Black News tonight. Welcome. Thank you so hey, much, Hey, glad to be with you. All right, so let, let's, this anti-trans measure in Arkansas overrides the veto uh, set in place a day prior by the state's governor, Asa Hutchinson, who calls the, the health care bill a vast overreach by government. In criticizing the bill, uh, the Republican governor pointed out how it does not exempt young people currently undergoing hormone treatment. Hutchinson added uh, that the new law is, quote, the, a product of the culture war in America. Such strange language. I want to start with you, Hope. Uh, take, <laughs> well, first of all, what do you make of this? Uh, first and foremost, I think that it's all hoopla, right? It's it's what we see on a constant basis as the erasure of trans folk in America. We constantly see that people are trying to do away with the lives of trans folk by using trans hysteria and trans scare tactics to make people believe that we are something to be feared and something to uh, kind of sort of do away with rather than people to be understood and respected as a part of everyday life, society and creative measures. It's it's ridiculous, as and I really. Hope, Hope, taking into consideration that studies have shown that most trans people in countries like the UK still prefer hiding their identities at work and in the United States with at least 16 other states considering anti-trans legislation, similar to what we saw in Arkansas, uh, <clears throat> what's the message for those of us who want to stand as allies, for those of us who want to do the work to fight this? I think the message is making sure that you're not putting the burden on trans people to educate you constantly. It's about being able to use the resources that we've provided. There are so many trans folks mm. that have created videos and resources and so many organizations that have popped up to ensure that you have everything that you need, right, to do the work that needs to be done. It's about researching and making sure that you know who's on the ground doing the work for that specific group and not just, you know, blindly giving uh, funds and access and resources to LGBT groups that don't participate particularly put trans people at the forefront of their messaging. Um, and also just kind of sort of putting yourselves in a position of empathy rather than trying to sympathize um, and doing more work around understanding that people, right, before we are anything else, we are people, we are individuals that live, work, eat, sleep, you know, go to the bathroom, share hotels with you and deserve to be respected in the same way that you would want to be respected by anybody else. Mm -hmm. Researchers at the University of California in San Francisco recently published a study that compared mental health symptoms and psychosocial risk factors among three particular groups, a black and Latinx trans youth, uh, white trans youth, and black and Latinx cisgender youth. The study estimates that 50% of black and Latinx transgender youth experience symptoms of depression and 46% uh, have experienced suicidal thoughts. Aisha, we look at that data. We also see considerable data about uh, uh, LGBT youth across the board, particularly in, in, in age groups like, for example, high, high school age youth, teenage youth, they're extremely vulnerable for depression, for suicide, for uh, forms of violence, for homelessness, all these factors that are seem to be grounded in homophobia and transphobia. Uh, in the 21st century, has there been any progress on this issue? I mean, there's, there's a way that we, we seem to be more progressive <laughs> than ever, and there's a way that this data suggests that we ain't, we ain't been nowhere. Man, look, Professor Hill, thank you so much for bringing up all the data points, right? Because if you're actually steeped in, in, in the basis of science, um, if you're actually looking at what is uh, matters for child health and well-being, and frankly, just listening to all of the experts around uh, child wellness in this country, uh, medical, uh, uh, um, psychological, and otherwise, uh, you would know that all these measures are detrimental um, to their health, and certainly the various isms of discrimination, of being a person of color, and happening to be queer, trans, uh, bi, LGBTQ, whatever it might be, um, all are impressed upon these young people. Here's the thing, though. I think about everything in political terms, and I have been fighting these fights for almost 20 years uh, in the LGBTQ movement. And at the end of the day, this is the same 
culture war that conservatives have been waging against women, have been waging against black people, have been waging against the entire LGBTQ community. And now the last bastion is to just attack trans youth. At the end of the day, the enemy to equality and frankly, the the, the people who are pushing bigotry uh, and bias in this country are the same. It is a certain type of um, very radical Republican who thinks that all this makes sense. And I'm going to just connect one last dot uh, to the broader politics of all this. It is not. It shouldn't be lost on any of us that the same people who are pushing these kind of egregious measures to do harm to young people in this country who happen to be transgender are the same people who are pushing voter suppression laws. They're the same people who are standing idly by uh, while black people are, are harmed by police and killed in the streets. It's the same faction of folks who do not want women to have full and total uh, equality uh, and agency in this country. And so we've got to really ask, what is all this about, right? Why are we trying to uh, discriminate against and ostracize anybody in our society and to enact provisions uh, like into law that make life harder for marginalized populations? Why would anybody want to do that becomes the question. You got to ask yourself. So, so so, Aisha, you, 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 your brilliant analysis, uh, both of your brilliant analyses are helpful here for helping us understand these intersections. But there's some people who are watching Black News tonight right now, and they said, I thought y'all was going to be talking about Black stuff. Help <laughs> this audience understand <laughs> how this is a Black issue. Mm -hmm. I'm a Black woman. That's I'm for both of y'all. You know, I, I, I think, and I think we can both attest and agree to that, Aisha, like, I am a black person. Before you noted that I was a transgender person sitting on your screen, you saw a person with brown skin, with locks that represents blackness and all of the stereotypical ways, right, that folks outside of our diaspora, outside of our communities, outside of our social structures understand blackness. And I think that what we need to realize is that having this exclusivity on who gets to claim that blackness based off of all of the other things that come along with their identity and expression are the same exact things that white folks do, that the white supremacists, that all of the people that put these laws into place on any other given day, right, when they are not attacking us, right, when they're not attacking trans and LGB folks, when they're not attacking the TGNC community, they are attacking our black skin. And that still includes me. That mm -hmm. still includes a part of the marginalization that I go through on a daily basis. Whether or not, you know, somebody knows that I'm trans, they know that I am black. And so I am still at risk of being harmed or killed. My little brothers, my little sisters, everyone in my family has gone through those things. I've watched people in my life, my uncles and all of those folks like shiver when the cops pull us over. And so when we're talking about the idea of mm. what it means to add these issues to black issues, look at the person on the screen and understand that I've experienced racism, understand that I went to and graduated from an HBCU and I've had that experience as well. Understand that I am still socialized as a black woman in America, which means that my voice is seen as less than everyone in the boardroom and I get to make the, the last, you know, opinion when everybody else is spoken. Um, and so when you talk about whether or not it's black enough, right, we should really narrow down the idea of having this exclusive nature because everything that is exclusive goes on sale at some point. And that does include what these Republicans feel like is freedom. Mm -hmm. I remember, and you know what, Aisha, hope is Aisha, absolutely right. Sitting... No, go ahead, Mark. No, I was going to say, I, I was going to say really quickly, Aisha, I was looking at the uh, the actions that were taking place in Minneapolis. And I was watching all of black America, indeed all of America, start to scream Black Lives Matter and after the killing of George Floyd. I watched people march through Minnesota, march through Minneapolis, talking about we have to affirm black lives. And then that very same week that we were taking actions in Minnesota, there was a black trans woman we saw on videotape being chased, being beaten, had to, she had to run into a store to protect herself from a crowd of, of mostly black men. And so for me, that juxtaposition was was stunning. It was disappointing. It was heartbreaking. Um, but it, it speaks to a, an issue, I think, which is how do we deal with this question of transphobia in the black community? That's not to say that black people are disproportionately or, or tra transphobic or, or, or more transphobic than the rest of this transphobic nation. But to ask the question, how do we protect all of our people? How do we scream Black Lives Matter and mean all of them? 
Mm, no, that's that's so deep. I mean, I just want to echo the fact that what Hope was saying, we ain't free until all of us are free, right? And when we yeah. think about all, we have to acknowledge who all is in our communities. And we also have to acknowledge that we are, as a Black community, a microcosm of America. And we have not really dealt with and addressed misogyny in a real way in the Black community, which so much of transphobia is really about misogyny. And then, of course, you know, homophobia, too. Um, and we also haven't addressed interpersonal violence in our community and domestic violence in our community. So there are all these other things, you're absolutely right, Mark, that we need to get to that is about blackness that we need to deal with. And unfortunately, our trans sisters in particularly often are at the, 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 the end of that harmful stick. Um, but we are not even talking about, you know, what's happening across the board with violence against women in the black community and certainly with trans women. So there's a whole lot that we need to unearth. And the, the, the key point that I want to constantly make as, as a black lesbian who has done, you know, this advocacy work through the lens of being a woman, being a black person, and then certainly being um, a, a LGBTQ community member, is that unless we are really willing as black people to recognize that we are better together, stronger together, and that all of us and all of our issues matter to the whole, then we're not really going to get far. And, I, and, and if you watch the Black Lives Matter movement, it is being led by queer young people. Queer young black people are leading much of the Black Lives Matter movement on the ground, on the front lines. And it's because all of our issues are, inter in, uh, are, are definitely intersectional and linked. Um, and all of that matters. We need to deal with it. Hope, there's, there's another piece of this that I, I just want to get at because you very brilliantly laid out um, how there's a way that trans aside, you're a black person who is dealing with these various forms of harm that come with just being black in this world, in an anti-black world. But there's another piece of this that I don't want to understate, right, which is the fact that black trans women are, do we, I think we may have lost hope, I'm sorry. Um, that that's okay. Well, what what? Oh, we got we got it back. Okay, hope because you 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 about to, you about to save me here. Uh, because I need I need your brilliant analysis. We we have we have this issue of what it means to be black and trans in particular, though that black trans women are at the bottom of all these measures of social prosperity. They're at the top of all these measures of social misery, whether it's incarceration rates, uh, abuse rates, uh, uh, sexual assault rates, etc. And I, I just don't want to ignore that. Um, is there a, a, I, I'm not, I don't want to put you, I don't want to make you responsible for giving a rallying cry or marching orders for the whole community, but is there something we should be thinking about in terms of how we can shift our politics or hone our politics in more acutely so that we can actually deal with the harm and the suffering that's happening to trans people under our watch? First, we have to care, right? I think that first and foremost, before we do anything, mm -hmm. we have to Care. A lot of the people within our communities, a lot of the social constructs and, and the conversation around Black transness and especially Black trans womanhood, right, uh, says to harm, to hurt, to kill, to lie on, to dismantle, and to disrupt, right, the existence of all things that are Black trans and femme at the same time. And so I think first and foremost, we have to make sure that we are dismantling the idea that Black trans women are something worthy of harm um, and also that we are worthy of a complete um, dehumanization process, right? Because I think that before people see us as anything else, they see us as things, as it's, and we see that in the conversations that we have online. We see it in the comments. We see it everywhere. Um, and to raise what you just said about Ayanna Dior, which is a young woman's name who was beaten in Minneapolis shortly after uh, the George Floyd um, killing, I think that when we talk about the ways in which we see uh, this violence and we have internalized it to be okay, we have justified the actions of these people, despite the fact that she was a child, despite the fact that she still is a child, right? Despite the fact that this would not have happened to a black cisgender woman for a fender bender, right? And these are things that we have to name. We have to name that this violence is not okay. We have to also put ourselves in positions of being able to learn. And once again, 
that empathy is is the goal, right? <laughs> we cannot all be fighting for the freedom of Black people, but then harming Black people who don't fit your uh, understanding. And to Aisha's point, it's about uh, really targeting misogyny. It's about asking Black men to hold yourselves accountable for the fact that some of you are attracted to Black women who happen to be trans, and that is okay. It's about also attacking the the, the notions that Black cis het women, you know, have against this this whole thing that it's an us versus them situation. There are so many nuanced conversations conversations that have to have. But before we can dig into any of that, we have to really dig into the way that we as Black folk have socialized the LGBT community and the experience around it to center itself in violence being the number one way to dismantle it. Um, and also to stop telling these false truths and these falsehoods about the fact that LGBT people within the Black community are dismantling the Black family. That's simply not true. Mm -hmm. We still have families. A lot of us still have family. Um, and we're adding mm -hmm. to the culture. And credited for it and that has to change that that's it man i thank you so much for this amazing conversation i appreciate you both uh, for, for providing greater insight and clarity into this topic uh, it's great having you on black news tonight i hope y'all promise me y'all come back again aisha hope it's been great to see you uh still to come on black news tonight